Hi everybody, Ellen here. Today I come to you guys with my March and April book haul. I have <laughs> combined the two because I didn't end up filming a book haul in March, obviously. So I have a shitload of books in this haul. I don't even know how many. I'll count them in the end. Uh, so you'll see it in the title. Uh, but yeah, I think this will probably be like the book haul of all of the historical fiction because there is a shitload of historical fiction in this haul. There are a few things that are not in that category or in that genre for that matter, but there's a lot and in general just a lot of books. Um, but yeah, let's get to it and I think we're going to start with the books that are not historical fiction. The first book is uh, Of Curses and Kisses by Sindhaya Manan. I actually hadn't heard of this before I picked it up, um, but it does seem interesting. Uh, so we meet Princess Jaya Ra Rao and for her nothing is more important than family and he, after the loathsome Emerson clan steps up their central old feud to target Jaya's little sister nothing will keep Jaya from extracting her revenge when she finds out she'll be attending the same elite boarding school at the Great Emerson it feels like the opportunity of a lifetime Jaya know, knows what she must do make Grey fall in love with her and then break his heart the much she has joy as an annoyance <laughs> Grace, brooding demeanor and lupin blue eyes have her drawn in and you know sworn enemies turn into full-blown fairy tale ending i do love boarding schools and i do like sonomenon's other books so it'll be interesting to see what this one ends up with children of virtue virtue and vengeance by tommy Ademi. this is actually like a lot smaller than i thought it would be um but yeah so it's pretty much just a little bit over 400 pages um, and this one says on the back this is the second book in Children of Blood and Bone series duology I don't really know what books just going to be but on the back it says they killed my mother they took our magic and they tried to bury us now we fight so that's pretty much summarize the first book so there's like not a lot more to say um, but yeah I do like these covers they're really kick-ass and cool but yeah I don't really want to say anything more because this is a sequel. And then we have The Kingdom of Buck uh, by Mary Lou. This is also a gorgeous cover. Um, in this one we meet, this is sort of a historical fiction, um, but it's about, you know, Mozart. Uh, but in this one we have his sister actually, his sister Na Nanerl. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, but she also wants to be remembered for her music. Uh, but there can only be sort of one Mozart. And that's pretty much all I know. But, you know, it sounds cool. It sounds interesting. And it's music. So it sounds like an interesting concept. We have Vanishing Deep by Astrid Schult. Uh, and on the front it says, Two sisters, one dangerous secret. 24 hours to uncover the truth. So we meet this girl named Tempe and her... Her parents actually died and Tempe found out that it was her sister's reason behind their deaths and her sister is also actually dead now. So she wants to resurrect her sister for 24 hours which costs a shitload of money for the government to be able to do that. So she has to, you know, collect stuff under the surface in the water to be able to solve them off so she can collect money so she will be able to resurrect her sister for 24 hours and she wants to ask her the question why did you kill her parents you know what happened and you know i have a feeling it's going to be a very interesting should go down so really looking forward to reading this one now we have the shadows between us patricia levin seller and in this one we meet alessandra and she's tired of being overlooked uh and she has a plan to gain power and that is to woo the shadow king and marry him and then kill him and take his kingdom for herself but maybe it turns out to be a little bit harder than she anticipated so i do love trisha levenseller's other books i have read a few of them so i really do look forward to reading this one and now we have the winter duke by claire elise eliza bartlett beautiful cover this one we meet Ekata, and she has her, she only wants to, you know, stay alive and she has the chance to prove herself a scholar and her older brother is actually finally named heir of the dukedom of Kilma above and there will be nothing to keep 
uh, her at home with her mother's family, not her books or her experience, not her family's icy castle on top of a frozen lake, not even the tantalizingly close karma below, a mesmerizing underworld kingdom that provides her family with magic. But just as escape is within reach, her parents and 12 siblings fall victim to a strange sleeping sickness and no one can find a cure. So overnight, Ikata inherits the title of a duke, her brother's captivating warrior bride, and every encroaching challenges from without and within her ministry. And that's pretty much all I'm going to read. But it does sound really cool and I do want to know about this underwater village dukedom. So that sounds really cool. Now we actually have a adult romance book because I do want to give it another chance. Uh, so I heard about this book from uh, Haley at Haley in Bookland and she really liked it so I'm going to try to give it a go, uh, but this is the Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams and all I know about this one is that we meet this guy whose wife has sort of been faking orgasms and he's really upset about that, so he joins sort of this um, book club and in this book club they read this Regency novel called, which is kind of steamy, and the book is called Courting the Countess and the guys sort of coach Gavin on saving his marriage and you know how to make it better and everything like that. It's like a fun concept, so hopefully I will like it. And now we have Moment of Truth by Casey West. This is the newest Casey West book, so of course I need to pick it up. Um, but this one we meet hardly, um, hardly more, and she's a swimmer and she wants to earn this scholarship to be able to go to college. Um, and she thinks it's totally worth the hard work um, that it takes to be able to, you know, reach her goal. But then one guy dressed as Hollywood's latest action hero Heath Hall crushes her swim weed and she's not amused and instead she's determined to make sure he doesn't bother her again only she's not sure who he is. And so we meet is in the first event the imposter has interrupted uh, but a little digging turns up a surprising number of people who could be Heath Hall including Hadley's ex-boyfriend and her best friend's crush. She soon finds herself getting copied in the mysterious world of the fake Heath Hall. So, I mean, I love Casey West, so I do have really high expectations on this one, but we'll see how it goes. And then we have The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrove. And this one takes place on Christmas Eve in 1617. And this year around the remote Norwegian island Vardo is Vardo is thrown into a reckless storm. A smart Magnus Dotter. Dotter. <laughs> As Martin Magnus that there watches, 40 fishermen, including her father and brother, are lost to the waves. The menfolk wiped out in an instant. Varda is now a place of women. And then 18 months later, as soon as the figure arrives, summoned from Scotland to take control of a place at the edge of the civilized world, Absalom Cornet knows that he needs to do what she needs to do to bring the woman of Varda to heal. With him, travels his young wife, Ursa, in Varda, and then Maren, Ursa finds something she has never find, be seen before, independent women. But Absalom sees only a place filled with terrible evil, one he must root out at all costs. And this is actually inspired by real events of the Varda storm and the 1621 witch trials, so that sounds really cool. And now we have The King of Crows by Libra Bray. This is the fourth and final book in the Diviner series. I have so far only read the first book, but I really do want to pick up the second very soon. Uh, but this series takes place in 1920s in New York. Uh, we meet Evie, who actually has sort of supernatural powers because she can touch an object and she can see what that object has sort of been a part of. So it's of a shoe, she can see what the wearer have been you know, for the last moments of life and everything like that. So Evie ends up moving to New York to live with her uncle at his museum and that sort of, a, and his museum actually happens to be sort of an occult museum and when women mysteriously ends up dead in New York, the police actually ask for her uncle's help since he is very well versed in the occult, uh, but Evie thinks she can be able to assist them in this case since she does have a special ability that they don't really want anybody to know about. Um, I did really love the first book, so I really want to continue on with it, but now I own <laughs> book two, three, and four, and I still have only read the first book, so need to get on it. 
And then we have The Light in Hidden Places by Sharon Cameron. So this one takes place in 1943 and 16-year-old Stefania has worked for the Diamond uh, family in the grocery store in Przemysl. I really can't pronounce that. It's a city in Poland. And sing she's been singing her way into their lives and hearts and she's actually also made a promise to one of the sons that she is going to be betrothed to him which is something they have to keep a secret because um, she's a Catholic and the diamonds are actually Jewish uh, but then everything changes when the German army invades Poland and the diamonds are forced into the ghetto and Stephanie Stefania is alone in an occupied city. The only person left to care for Helena, her six-year-old sister, and then comes knock at the door. Isio's brother, the guy she wanted to be betrothed to, Max has jumped from a train headed to a concentration camp. Stefania and Helena makes the extraordinary decision to hide Max and eventually twelve more Jews. Then they must wait every day for the next knock at the door, the one that will mean death. When the knock finally comes, in it is two SS officers requesting Stefania's house for the German army, army, which will obviously be a problem since they're hiding 12 Jews, which they can't exactly tell them. So this sounds really, really interesting actually, and I do want to pick this up so soon, but like I said, I have a shitload of historical fiction books in this haul, so we'll see how it goes with that. And then we have The Girl in the Blue Coat by Monica Hesse. This one takes place in Amsterdam, in Holland, in 1943. And we meet this girl named Hanneke. And she spends her days finding and delivering sought-after black market goods to paying customers. And her night hiding the true nature of her work from her concerned parents. She likes to think of her illegal work as a small act of rebellion. Uh, but one day Hanneke gets a very unusual request. And that is one of her regular customers actually asked her to find a girl and that happens to be a girl that has disappeared from a secret room in her house and that girl also happens to be Jewish so it sounds really interesting I've heard great things about it so like once again just I need to get to it now we actually have two books in the same duology we have Codename Verity and Rose Under Fire by Elizabeth Veen Wine Ween I don't know. Uh, I think Conan Verity is the first book and this is the second book. Um, I do believe they're about different characters, but this one is about an ATA pilot, amateur poet, Rose Justice. And she's captured by um, the Nazis and sent to Ravensburg, uh, which happens to be a notorious women concentration camp. And this one takes place in 1943. There happens to be a British plane that crashes in Nazi occupied France, and its pilot and passengers are best friend. But just one of the girls has a chance at survival. Uh, they get arrested by the Gestapo. And Verity is given a choice. Reveal her mission or face a grisly execution. And they're just really trying to get the truth out of her. But they don't know what to expect. Two circle fictions I've heard a lot about. Really great things. So I really do want to read them. Sometime soon. But then we have The Book Thief by Marcus Susak. This is the special anniversary edition which looks pretty cool. Um, this book has been out for like forever. I don't really know when it was published actually. This was published in 2005. Uh, I read this book many, many years ago. I don't know how old I might have been. It might have been like, like 12 years ago. I don't know. Uh, it's been a long time. To say the least um but yeah i do want to reread it um when i read it the first time i wasn't really well versed in historical fiction i didn't really read it because at that point i was mainly reading fantasy and pretty much nothing else uh so this was one of my first historical fiction actually um i did find the topic very interesting but i didn't really like the narrative style because you know, you get to follow death, and death is actually, you know, the narrator, and he tells what's going to happen and everything like that. And he sort of, I feel like he kind of spoiled things, because he keeps saying like, oh, this is going to happen, but not for another few months. And that just really threw me off, and I didn't really like that. Uh, but I do want to give it uh, another chance. And, you know, now when I've read more historical fiction, maybe I will enjoy this one more. Hopefully so, because, well, I bought one copy. And in this one we meet Dolsa and her mother, and they're actually sens 
sentenced to burn for heresy, but only Dulce escapes with her life. Uh, when Nori shows us but to flee, she stumbles into a small village, weak and helpless, and miraculously she is saved by three sisters who offer to conceal her in the back room of their cavern. But with pursuers at their heels, it's only a matter of time until she's found, and when the moment finally arrives, will the strength of, strength of her devotion be enough to save her? So, sounds really interesting. Then we have a, another duology, and this is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin and Blood for Blood by Ryan Grodin. I actually did buy the matching covers, but uh, shit happens because I was sent this cover, which is just atrocious, and now they will not match, but at least the height is the same. But I mean, the cover I did order was this one right there um but they sent me the ugly cover like i said so <sighs> it pains my sort of ocd eyes at this point but i'm gonna try to get past it um i don't really know a lot about this duology except it's supposed to be awesome um but this is takes place in 1956 and it's you know after World War II and this is sort of the outcome of what would have happened if you know Hitler and his allies you know won the second world war and there's supposed to be this sort of race where the winner is supposed to accept an award from uh, Hitler himself and we have this girl that goes undercover and so sort of skin shifts or something like that to look like this other person that has won this race before and She's trying to win so she can meet Hitler and assassinate him. And that's pretty much all I know, but it does sound really cool and kick-ass. Um, so, you know, I think this will definitely be a very high prioritized duology. And then we have The Passion of Dulce by Julie Berry. Um, I read um, Lovely War by this author last month. I love that book so much, so I really want to give this book a chance as well. This has actually won the Prince Honor Award. Now we have another duology, so we have Prisoner of, Night, Prisoner of Night and Fog and Conspiracy of Blood and Smoke by Anne Blankman. It's supposed to be about Hitler's knees. Um, she's starting to find out that Hitler actually isn't a very good guy and he has done some terrible things. And she actually joins forces with this Jewish reporter trying to expose what he's doing. And, you know, shit goes kind of down. Um, I've heard great things about this book, so I really look forward to reading them. And I feel like it would be a very interesting premise. I have The Things We Cannot Say by Kelly Rimmer. And this is inspired by real historical events. And we have sort of two timelines. We do read about 2019 and we also read about World War II. Um, so we have... Um, Alice and her life changes beyond recognition uh, when her son Eddie was born with autism spectrum disorder and she must do everything to support him but at what cost to her family and then when her gra Sherry's grandma is hospitalized a hidden box of mementos reveals a tattered photo of a young man a tiny shoe and a letter and her grandmother begs Alice to return to Poland to see what becomes what became of those she held the dearest and then in World War II, Alina and Thomas are childhood sweethearts. And then the night before he leaves the college, Thomas proposes marriage. But when their village falls to the Nazis, Alina doesn't know if Thomas is alive or dead. And then back again to Poland in 2019, Alice begins to uncover the story of her grandmother. And it, uh, this is a story her grandma is very desperate to tell. And she discovers a love that bloomed into the winter of 1920 in 1942 and as painful family history comes to light with the struggles of the past and present finally reach a heartbreaking resolution so it sounds cool i'm not the biggest fan of like two different timelines because i usually just end up liking one a lot more than the other one which is kind of risky because then i might get bored with the one timeline but since it is historical fiction i really do hope this will keep my interest and now we have the huntress by kate quinn and this one takes place in 1944 in Soviet Russia. And in the only country to be flying female bomb pies, Phyllis, Nina Markova and her fellow night witches defend the skies against the Nazi foreman. But when Nina crashes behind enemy lines and comes eye to eye with the ruthless murderers, her life hangs in the balance. 
Hunted by the Horse of War, British journalist Ian Graham begins to search for Nazi war criminals, and yet one dangerous target eludes him, a killer known as the Huntress. And only Nina, the one witness to escape alive, can draw her out. In post-war Boston, Jordan McBride has a new stepmother, yet as she delves into the, this mysterious woman's past, she discovers a well of dark secrets and a danger hidden in plain sight. So this sounds really cool actually, so I do want to... I want to read all of these books so bad! And then we have Schindler's List by Thomas Kennelly, and this is, you know, about... Uh, a factory director, Oscar Schindler, and he came to save a lot of Jews from the gas chambers uh, during World War II. He was actually the one that saved the most people out of all. And this is supposed to, you know, tell his story of how it all went down. So, yeah, I really do look forward to reading this one because I feel like I kind of should have read it, but I haven't. So, I just have to, you know, make penance for that and read it now. And then we have The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. And this is based on the powerful true story of Lale or Lail Sokolov. Uh, so in this one we meet uh, Lail Sokolov and he is, you know, working at this, uh, working in Auschwitz, which is one of the, you know, concentration camps. And there he works as a tattooist and he is supposed to, you know, tattoo the blue digits on the prisoner's arms. And... He just tries to keep his fellow victims alive and if you're caught you could be killed and many of the people in the concentration camps actually owes them um, because they, you know, survived. And, you know, while working as a tourist, he actually come across, you know, the love of his life and he's trying to protect her because he's sworn, you know, that they will be sweethearts forever if they ever do get out of there and, you know. He's hellbent in getting them out of there. And then we have this teeny tiny pocket with really, really, really small ass text. But I'll read it even though I would have wished for a big ass paperback. Um, but this is Fall of Giants by Ken Follet. This is book one of the Century Trilogy. In this one we meet a 13 year old Welsh boy and he enters a man's world in the mining pits. An American law student who rejects Rejected in love finds a surprising new career in Woodrow Wilson's White House, a housekeeper for the aristocratic Fitzherberts, takes a faithful step of our host station. While Lady Maud Elizabeth, while Lady Maud Fitzherbert herself crosses deep into forbidden territory when she falls in love with a German spy, and two orphan Russian brothers embark on radically different paths, where their plan to emigrate to America falls a fall of war, conscription, and revolution. And this book is to take us into the inextricably, that's a hard word, <laughs> entangled fates of five families and an ancient century that we thought we knew, but that now will never see seem the same again. And then finally, 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 the last book, because I feel like I'm losing my voice soon, uh, but this is A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen. And this one is supposed, you know, to take place, you know, when the rise of the Berlin war Wall um, was. And we meet 12-year-old Goethe and her family is actually divided overnight because she, her mother and her brother Fritz live on the eastern side controlled by the Soviets while her father and her middle brother who had gone west in search of work are unable to return home. Greta knows it's dangerous to watch the wall to think forbidden thoughts of freedom yet she can't help herself. She sees the East German soul with their guns trade on the, their own citizens watching for any sign of escape. Gerda, her family, neighbors and friends are prisoners in their own city and one day Gerda kind of sees her dad trying to you know give her a message from the other side of the wall and um, trying to tell her that she and her her mother and first her brother are supposed to you know try to escape trying to get to the other side of the wall so that the family can be reunited which of course is very problematic since you may you may end up dead because they will shoot at you if they do notice you trying to get over the other side of the wall so it does sound interesting I mean, I have been in Berlin, I've seen the little piece of the wall that is still standing, and this is a really interesting subject, so as always, with all of these books, I do want to read them soon. Yeah, those were all of the books I'm hauling. 
And now I'm tired. So let's get to counting those books. Okay, so if I've counted it correctly, I have 26 books that I just hauled. And like, I would say that maybe like 18 or something of like that are, con are historical fiction. So, woohoo. <laughs> I just need some historical fiction to choose from and now I won't be able to choose so now that would be a, a completely different problem but still a problem. If you have read any of these books please let me know down below what you thought about them without spoiling of course. If you can you know give me some pointers to which historical fictions I should pick up next please let me know down below as well and if you like this video please don't forget to give me some thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button down below and yeah I hope to see each other in the next one. Bye!